Hey everyone, it's been a, a couple of weeks, a few weeks, I think. I'm not sure how long it's been, but a little while since we've done a fishing review, fishing attack review. So we're doing one today and I've got some new interesting attacks and a report of attacks I have not personally experienced or had privy to. So we're going to jump into it here. Oh, before we jump into it, I, I forget. Owner of Nuage Tech, Proactive IT, based in Connecticut, serving clients all over. Um, we have a webinar coming up on July 27th. So as I'm recording this and uploading it 12 days, you can register for that webinar, which is called what's lurking on your network. And it's kind of an overview of what you need to be aware of, what you need to look for, how to make sure you're not being hacked, things like that. Uh, you know, one of the early steps in, this, in most cybersecurity frameworks is taking a, an, an assessment of what you have and what risks you have and so that's the kind of the premise of the webinar it's free it's july 27th 1 p.m eastern go to bit.ly that's bit.ly slash lurking l-u-r-k-i-n-g-n-t and register for free i've got some re some registrations already and i don't have a lot of room on that webinar so get in there and register again lurk um bit.ly bit.ly slash lurking l-u-r-k-i-n-g n-t short for noise tech all right so let's jump into this and this is the first one i received this personally uh, a few days ago but i know where this goes because i actually extended one out um played along for i think it was they, they strung me out for a few days to maybe a week or two um this one is kind of where that one starts so you get a random text message from someone. I don't know this person. I, I don't know anybody named Massey or Macy. Uh, I do know somebody named Sloan, but there's no relation. And they ask if this is Scott. And I said, I am sorry. I don't know anyone named. I meant to type Macy, but my phone corrected it to Maddie. Oh, my bad. I didn't mean to disturb you. Whom do I have the pleasure of speaking with? So that what they're trying to do, and I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. You tell them who you're speaking to. So my phone number is is available you can look me up and find my phone number pretty easily and what they're going to do is try to get you to switch the conversation over to whatsapp they're going to give you some excuse why they need to use whatsapp that's fine so i did this with a, a different one and carried this conversation out for quite some time and ultimately it was a, a woman um and being who i am i said well send me pictures and i would request new pictures all the time because i wanted to see if those pictures would show up anywhere else and eventually they slipped up and sent a picture that i was able to match to a restaurant in budapest but they were telling me they were in new york i told them i was a club owner in miami they didn't have any idea who i was uh on that conversation this one they they have probably a good idea of who i am um ultimately what the person was trying to do and it's sort of a romance scam they were trying to get me to log into a website for cryptocurrency but it was a it was not a legitimate website. So they were trying to get me to purchase cryptocurrency. They were trying to get me to send screenshots of me using Cash App, of all things, to purchase cryptocurrency. And then uh, send them to them. And I played dumb when all these things happened. And they eventually sent me a link to a website. And I don't recall the name of it at this point. But it was not a legitimate website. It's a scam site. And they were trying to scam information. I'm sure ultimately some cryptocurrency out of me. So you get random text messages from someone and look at first, even if it's your name, you don't know who it is, play dumb, um, just, or just block them. I, I usually block them, but I wanted to see where it was going to go. And so I went along with it. Uh, and that's where it wound up. And I think that's where a lot of them are going now or some type of financial scam. So if you don't know the person, especially when they give you a name, a full name, and you don't recognize that name. I even took the time to look this up, but there is no Massey Sloan in Connecticut. So this one was sent to me by a client. Um, this is one we've done before, sort of. So you get an email, it just says Norton LifeLock because they forwarded it, I couldn't see the email address. But the uh, tip, tip off is this here. This is not the person's name. It's just a bunch of random characters followed by their email address. And it's a, a 
email claiming that your Norton LifeLock subscription is about to expire. You need to renew. And there's a button that says click here. The button does not take you to Norton's website or any of the legitimate websites where you would purchase it. Um, that's, you know, fairly simple. We reviewed this many times. So this is not news. This is old, but it's still, and it seems to be more prevalent now. It's I've, I've seen people, more people complaining about it. It's happening a lot. Now, there isn't a whole lot that you could do. This particular client forwarded this email from their personal email address and not from their business email address. And their personal email address is a free ISP email address. So their internet provider gave them this email address. And actually, it's one that doesn't even really exist anymore. The ISP itself, but the email addresses still work. And um, because it's you know a free email account provided by your internet service provider, not a whole lot you could do about it except report it as spam. So if it's a business account, there are business accounts on Microsoft, there's more we can do. But the best thing you could do, the, the, the best foolproof method of avoiding being tricked is by education. And that's why we do this. So any, you know, these are tip offs, this random name, if, if, if Norton or Symantec, whatever company you want to call it, LifeLock was legitimately trying to get you to renew, uh, it would not have this random set of characters. It would be a regular name. That's just one tip off. This one is an interesting one. Um, there's been a rash and, and this has been going on for years. So you people try to steal social media accounts. And this is Instagram. So I get this message from someone on Instagram and it's not somebody I really know, but it is somebody who's been on Instagram for a while and um, similar interests uh, in, in in the business world. So I, out of the blue, I've never spoken to them before. Out of the blue, I get a message. Hey, I really need to talk to you about something. I need your help. And I said, well, what do you need? I knew right away this was a scam. This person's never messaged me before. They don't like any of my posts. They don't do anything. Sorry, I might appear intrusive. I'm contesting for an ambassadorship spot at an online influencers program. I was wondering if you could vote for me. Now, the profile that they're messaging on Instagram, my profile, this particular one has some ties to marketing on it. So that may be why they worded it the way they did. And so I asked, how do I do that? And they said, please send me your active mobile number. A code will be sent to you. Please screenshot it and send it to me. Sorry. This is my response. Sorry, that's not going to happen. Good try, though. You'll be on my next fishing video. Here it is. I'll send you the link. Now, I'm not going to tell you whose account this is because my assumption is the account was hacked. And by the way, they're persistent. It's just a code, nothing else. I'm assuming this account was hacked. Here's what they're trying to do. So you're thinking, all right, it's just a code, who cares? No, they're going to try to log into my Instagram account or some other account that they know I have that has multi-factor authentication set up. And then they're gonna ask for the code. Little does she know, I don't actually do text message codes, but that's what they're going to do. And then they're gonna log into the account and steal the account. I know this happens because I know people that this has happened too. This is what exactly what happens on these platforms. So that account was probably compromised. Uh, almost definitely was compromised. So it's hacked. Somebody owns, somebody different has it, control of it now. And they're sending me this message out of the blue. And um, what they're trying to do is gain more Instagram accounts. And I can tell you Instagram accounts with um, regular names, you know, they don't have all the extra characters and underscores and all of that are fairly popular on the dark web, meaning you could sell them in, in especially ones that have followers. And I have, I'm not sure how many followers I have on that account, but it's, it's in the thousands, you know, three or 4,000. So that's, there's some value to it. And so that's why they're sending this message. That's why they want me to send my active phone number, because where's that, that message going to go? If not through an app, it's going to go through my phone number and then send them the screenshot with that information, especially text message, because with the app, with the uh, code generator app, the MFA app, the code is only good for 30 seconds. But with text message, you have more time. 
don't fall for this bad news <clears throat> and then this one this is on bleeping computer i'll put the link to it in the youtube um description hackers impersonate cybersecurity firms and call back phishing attacks so what is happening here uh we kind of touched on this with the payment apps so zelle and some of the other apps where they will call you and say you know we've detected some fraudulent activity on your zelle account uh, can you send money to, and they're going to give you your cell phone number, but in reality, they've claimed your cell phone number. So the cell phone number is actually on their account and you send the money to that account and it's gone now. Oh, can you send us $5,000 to verify your account? You're going to send it to yourself. You send it because you think you verified your cell phone number on your account. You did not. Somebody else did now claim it and you're sending the $5,000 to them. Well, this is kind of similar. This is companies like CrowdStrike. So fortunately or unfortunately, I guess, I'm not sure how you want to place it, but uh, my companies aren't quite that big. Not too many of them are actually, but they're getting callback. Um, they're getting phone calls. I know it says emails here, but in callback phishing email. So what they'll do is they'll send you an email claiming they're from CrowdStrike and then they'll place a phone call to you the kind of it improves the chances that they'll be successful with the phishing attempt when they do this. So by using multiple methods of phishing attacks, in this case, phishing and vish and vishing, voice phishing, um, they're improving their chances that it will work. So now they call you, and we went over this too with the canceling the Norton subscription. I think, I think we did that. I did a actually I recorded that call. That's on on YouTube as well, but it's also on my my uh um TikTok. all right so they'll call you pretending to be in this case CrowdStrike or some other large it company and say well we need to remote into your computer to fix whatever issue you're having you know they claim there's an issue they discovered some some malicious activity or something like that they need to remote in to to fix it and they are not who they claim to be and now they've gained access because you allowed them to remote in so they're using email phishing voice phishing, also known as vishing, and they're gaining access through remote, some kind of remote support tool. And, and some of those tools are free. As a matter of fact, you can remote into Microsoft Windows 10 and 11 using Quick Assist for free. You just have to have somebody give you the code. Um, or actually the person remoting in gives the person they're remoting to the code for Quick Assist. So a little backwards from other tools. So they get in and now they're uh, maybe install a quick program or maybe they have you download a different program. So maybe they have you download team viewer, but they've compromised team viewer and that includes some kind of malicious code, or they're going to transfer a file through team viewer. I'm not sh I don't remember if you could do it to quick assist. I believe you can. Um, the, so all of these different methods of potentially compromising you. So once they have access, they're going to take advantage of that access and they're going to be quick and they're going to be sneaky about it this happened to me my company years ago many years ago um when it was a different name they, somebody i got a phone call saying hey you were just in my computer and it was nobody i've ever spoken to before but somebody claimed to be my company and remoted into their computer and did something that was a long time ago um because we've been under this name for three and a half years now so it's been at least four years but i think it was more like 10 and they got in and did something i'm not sure what they did never spoke to that person before never spoke to them again so i'm not sure what it was that they did uh but it was probably the early days of ransomware when you would get somebody to lock your computer and they would say give me 250 dollars to unlock your computer or we're going to report you to the fbi because we found you know images on your computer or something like that don't fall for it and as a matter of fact my email signature says we will not call you to say we need access to your computer and then use some all my clients know what tools i use they know how we do it they know uh if we really need access we will just access it because we have that access and that access has not one but two forms of of secondary authentication so there's the password but then there's two other forms of authentication before i could even remote it and i you know they're not going to they're not going to fall for that because they know I don't operate that way. And I make it very clear 
in my email signature. I make it very clear in our onboarding process. All of these things are prevented. Don't fall for this. No, no legit company is going to call you and say, we need, we found malicious activity on your computers. We need access. Not going to happen. So this one's a little longer than usual, maybe because I haven't been doing this every week. Sometimes I have weeks where I have a ton of stuff and other weeks, you know, we don't get a lot. So I think my client for the ones she actually sent me three, but they were all pretty similar in nature. And then I, uh, of course the rest are either my own or this article on bleeping computer. Don't forget to register for the webinar. Again, it's bit.ly bit.ly slash lurking L U R K I N G N T. Well, register is free. I mean, all you got to do is give me a little bit of time and you'll learn a lot. I promise. And, uh, don't forget to like subscribe, comment, whatever on YouTube, or if you see this on Facebook or LinkedIn, appreciate that. And until next time, stay secure.